lesson one of Girls Can Jam. If you haven't watched the Before You Get Started video, I would recommend that you watch it first. It's going to show you what you need for today's lesson, um, how to use the DVD lessons, and how to track your progress. If you have watched it, let's go ahead and get started. The first thing you're going to do is learn about the snare drum. These two drums here are both snare drums. Snare drums will always have a top head, which is this one, and a bottom head, which is this one. And snare drums are called snare drums because they have a bed of snares that lay on the bottom. These here are a multiple um, band of wire snares. I'm going to say that differently. Um, depending on your drum, your snares could look a little bit differently. This one here has a bed of wire snares. This one here has three different sets of snares, but they're all called snares. The snare drum is the only drum that has any type of device laying up against the back, bottom of the head like this. All snare drums are going to have a snare release lever. This is either going to allow your snares to hang loose, like this, and when you turn it on, the snares lay up against the head. That changes the sound of the drum drastically. This is snares on, and this is snares off. You can experiment a little bit that, with that with your own drum, but it does make quite a difference. The snares are probably the most fragile part of your snare drum. You want to make sure that your snares are always hanging loose and flat, and if any of the wires ever get replaced, it's going to change the sound of your drum drastically. So, though they do look like guitar strings, you definitely don't want to strum them because they don't them. Your snare drum stand is going to have three arms on it, and you want to make sure that one of the arms is not sitting here or here, because that also has a chance of damaging the snares. So, as long as it's sitting on your stand, without the stand coming in contact with the, the snare bed, you're good to go. So we have a top head, a bottom head, a set of snares, a snare release lever, these two silver, I guess they don't have to be silver, these two hoops are called rims. We have a top rim and a bottom rim. The area in between the rim is called a shell, and then these here are lugs. Lugs are what you use to tune your drum. Some drums have a built-in dampening device, like you will see on this drum, which you don't actually see because this is not the drum we're going to be using. And if your drum does not have a dampening device, similar to this drum, you could tell by looking through the bottom of your head, your drum is probably going to sound best if it has some type of dampening device on the top. I use a handkerchief. You could use pretty much whatever you would want because it takes over the higher tones, it takes out the overtones of your drum which you can experiment with it just by putting your finger on the drum. This is no dampener. This is with the dampener. It takes out kind of the higher notes, which is going to make your drum sound better. All right. For drum set stuff, we, of course, are going to be sitting down. And for snare drum stuff, I would like you to be standing. So the next step is figuring out the correct height for your pad or your drum. If you step up to your pad and your arms are at your side, you bring your hands casually up so that your shoulders are relaxed. That will show you the correct height for your stand. You don't want your shoulders to be up here, nor do you want to have to drop your wrist to hit the drum. It should just be at a relaxed level where your shoulders are not tense. For most people, that's about at your waist. If you're playing on a snare drum, it needs to be on a stand. If you're playing on a pad, it could be on a stand or it could even sit on top of your drum. Um, or if you don't have a pad or if you don't have a stand, that's okay. You just need to find a surface that will allow it to be the correct height. All right, let's talk about your sticks. Your sticks have a picture of a little girl, of a girl playing a drum set. That's exactly where you need to put your thumb. So cover up the girl with your thumb and then wrap your fingers around. You don't want your thumb sticking out like this and having your fingers way at the bottom, nor do you want your index finger pointing out like this. Your thumb and your index finger should, look, should be even. The grip that we're using is called match grip. That means that both of your hands look the same. 
So on your left hand, cover up the girl with your thumb, wrap your fingers around, have your thumb and your index finger the same. Now when you set up to play, the tops of your hands need to be flat, your thumbs need to be facing each other, and then your sticks make a V. Both of the tip of the stick should meet at the same place. To review, um, your thumb needs to be covering the, little, the girl. You need to wrap your fingers around thumb and index finger even. There should be about that much showing on the bottom of your stick. To set up, the top of your hands are flat. Your thumbs are facing each other. Your sticks are making a V so that the two tips meet. The first stroke we're going to learn is called the rebound stroke. The rebound stroke starts at the top, goes down, hits the drum, and then bounces back up. This is a wrist stroke. You want to use your wrist to cause the motion. You don't want it to be an arm stroke. You also need it to be a full stroke so that you're coming in. Uh, I'm not going to say that part of the full stroke. This stroke needs to be a wrist stroke. You need to make sure that the motion is coming from your wrist and not from your arm. You shouldn't ever go higher than what your stick is standing straight up nor should your stick ever go behind your head. Which sounds like a silly thing to say, but you would be surprised how, much, how many times you can catch yourself doing that. Now, since I'm not in the room for you and I can't check your grip, you could do it yourself by looking in a mirror. When you're practicing your rebound stroke, you wanna make sure your stick is going straight up and down, and you wanna make sure that it's hitting in the same spot for every single stroke. You also wanna make sure you're getting one hit rather than a buzz or every once in a while getting extra hits. Your hand grip is loose and your fingers and hand are really only doing, um, applying as much pressure as it would need for the stick to go straight up and down and to only bounce once on the drum. Make sure you practice it with both hands. For me, my right hand is way better than my left hand. My left hand has to do a lot of work to catch up with my right hand. So I have to spend some extra time on my left. This one too, you'll want to practice in the mirror to make sure your right and your left hand look the same. That stroke again is called the rebound stroke. If the rebound stroke feels a little weird to you, pause the video, work on it for a little bit. Once it feels comfortable, restart and we'll talk about the first exercise. The first exercise is called eight on a hand, and it is simply eight rights, all rebound strokes, and then eight lefts, no pauses in the middle. Why don't you try that with me? We'll go a little bit slower. One, two, ready, go. A wrist generated stroke, and when one stick is not playing, it stays in the up position. You don't want to take your hand and put it down when it's not playing. Just let it relax up here. You also want to make sure that both sticks are hitting at the same spot in the drum. And then you're not pausing when you switch. We'll do, this will be our last time. So here's our last right and then we'll go to left. Good. That exercise is called eight on hand. If you're playing on a snare drum, you want to make sure you're playing right on top of the snare bed. Because you can hear how this sounds versus this. Or this. So you want to make sure both sticks are playing right on top of the bed. Listen to make sure that both sticks sound the same, both hands sound the same, and that you're not getting any buzz or any multiple hits. All right, this is where we're going to bring the metronome in. If you don't have a metronome, it's okay. You'll need to find one. <clears throat> if you don't have a metronome, it's okay. There's many available online. If you just Google metronome, you can go to metronome online. It's one that I use a lot. Um, or you can pick up a metronome in a music store for usually between $20 and $30. Most metronomes aren't going to be this bulky. Mine is. Um, 
Mine's old, and so it's big, but the newer ones are a little bit smaller. We're going to start at 90 beats per minute. What that means is you're going to have one hit for every click. Now, if you're playing on a drum, it doesn't take very long for it to get louder than what the metronome is going to be able to play. That is why most metronomes come with most metronomes come with the ability to put in headphones, and then it'll be played through through earbuds, and you don't have to worry as much about not being able to hear. For these lessons, we're going to play it through an amp, which you can also do at home. It's going to say nice and loud sound you're hearing. All right, one hit per click, eight on the hand. Make sure you're holding your sticks correctly, your thumbs are in the right spot. Hands are staying flat, and you're using your wrist to raise the shirt. One, two, three, go. Sit nice and relaxed, making sure your sticks going straight up and down.
what you can do to this for about two minutes. until I 
I get to 110, which might be one rep less than this. This is 110. This is our goal. Stay relaxed. Make sure you're holding your stick right. And one hit. practicing. 